Okay, so I wanted to really quickly give you some test taking tips when you're actually taking the real exam, some things you should know. Um, I'm hoping that I can re-record this showing the actual test interface, but I kind of don't think that's possible. I don't know if Certiport has like a, a, just a practice sort of fake exam that I could run through to show you in the real interface, but I kind of think that there isn't. So first thing is um, on all of the simulations, right? That's where it looks like you're actually in the program working on things. Then uh, if you do something and you started doing it wrong and then you figure out the right way to do it, in the top right corner, there's a button that says reset question. Reset the question, right? After you do the sim uh, and you start going down the wrong path, I, I, it's very difficult to program a sim to be just like the real software. So once it kind of triggers, hey, they're going the wrong direction, sometimes it gets stuck in marking that question wrong. So poke around, feel free to poke around, but as soon as you find the right way to do it, reset the question and then just do what you need to do in as efficient a way as possible. Click, 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 next question, okay? Um, the second thing is that uh, in the questions that are scenarios, right? There might be a big paragraph and then there's a little question like at the bottom. Start by just reading the question at the bottom. You do not need to read in almost every question. You don't need to read the whole scenario. Teachers, especially for those of you that are working in areas where uh, maybe English is not the primary language for the students, having them not have to read that and decipher that whole paragraph might really save a ton of time. Also, students that just have problems reading, that can really save a ton of time. Um, there's also an option at the bottom where you can mark a question for review, okay? That's a good feature to know if you use it sparingly. Students, if you mark every question for review, that's the same thing as not marking anything for review. Only mark a question for review if you think that you might have a better answer later. But if you answer the question, you're like, yeah, I think that's it. Or you have no idea and you're just guessing, then you can, um, you know, maybe mark it for re review. But keep in mind, the more you have to mark for review, the less chance you'll have of getting through all of them at the end. Okay, so be conservative with marking items for review. Um, one other thing that I just thought about is that when you are going through the review process, right? So you get to the very end, you um, will see a list of all of the questions and it will show you the ones that you've marked for review. What you wanna do is click on it to go to that question, answer the question, right? Do it again, and then don't click next. You'll see there's a new button in the center, which I think says go back to overview or something like that. Answer the question and then click the overview, not the next button. That'll get you back to the big list. The other thing is that if it's a simulation, right, where it looks like you're in the software, if you take the test, right, and you do a question and you think you got it right, but you somehow, for some reason, you marked it for review accidentally or you hit next and got to it. In theory, if you don't touch anything and go back to the overview, it shouldn't change your answer, but it also won't show up like it's done. If you just touch anything though, it starts, it erases the old recording of what you did and starts recording again. So what I always tell my students is if you go back to a SIM, just redo the SIM, right? If you know it, and if you don't know it, then just, you know, go back to the overview and don't worry about it. Uh, but don't spend too much time. You know, there's 40 questions about, and the test is about 40 minutes. So you got about a minute per question. If you're taking longer than that, you're just kind of, messing yourself up because you won't have time to finish everything. So go through it. Also students, don't just stare at a question. If you know the answer, click it and hit next. Okay, don't worry about, oh, I'll mark it for review because maybe, maybe I'm not right. Assume that you're right. Assume that you know what you're talking about because you probably do. Go ahead and mark, answer the question, move on, all right? So uh, I think that's it for kind of test taking tips. And like I said, I would love to get uh, Certiport's permission to get into the interface and sort of show you the interface because that's one of the things that I think just freaks people out is they have to learn that interface to begin with. 
I'm going to see what I can do about that. No promises. But those are the basic questions. Number one, remember to reset the question if you go back to it or if you poke around. Uh, number two, you only have to read the last sentence. You don't have to read that whole paragraph on the scenario questions. And uh, lastly, be very conservative with marking for a review. Don't do it on every question because that just isn't going to help you. You won't have time to review the ones. Only go back and mark for review the ones that you really think you need to come back to. And if you only have three or four to go through, you probably have time to get to them.